All right, hello everyone. My name is Corey Dowds. I'm a financial, I'm a Vedic astrologer and also a financial astrologer. And so I wanted to give an update on the financial astrology market movements of 2023. But first, I need to do, I need to basically explain 2022 because it's actually been a year since I've done any sort of updates or really spoken about the financial astrology. Um, so, so many of you probably took that last course that I taught about a year ago in April of 2022. It was called Venus and Paying the Price. And we covered a lot of important material there. The lessons in there were really good um, about value, how to see value and cost and need and how to assess basically like how important Venus is for making the important decisions uh, in the markets and how to basically how to make money and why certain people are really good investors studying their Venus and this and that um, but the predictions that I gave were only half right or I'll just go ahead and say that they were totally wrong because I feel like I, I hold high standards to myself with these predictions um, so I predicted that the markets would go up on certain windows and they did not but I did accurately predict when the markets would go down and those were still very accurate but something prevented the markets from moving up so I had predicted that when Jupiter went into Aries, that would be very good for crypto and the, the Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies for various reasons that I don't have time to go into. But if you've taken the 20 plus hours of the master course and also took the Venus course, then you know what I'm talking about. But through a variety of angles, it looked like, okay, um, Jupiter should be able to make things go up a bit. It didn't though. Why was I wrong? Why was I wrong on this? It was because I did not emphasize the lunar nodes enough. So, again, like, it's, it's just, it's a very funny thing because actually the year before in 2021, the whole, like I, I taught, um, you know, again, more than 20 hours worth of courses in 2021 on financial astrology. And I taught how uh, the lunar nodes, Rahu and Ketu, are like these ceilings, like they're like the highest thing in the chart. No matter what type of astrology it is, whether it's medical astrology, financial astrology, forensic astrology, psycho-spiritual healing astrology, whatever, they're really, they really are like this ceiling. They cast this shadow, you know, over everything else. And Rahu itself means like dark or eclipse, you know, like a shadow. Um, so basically, the, in, in a nutshell, what I predicted was that Back in 2021 okay the bull market is over 2022 is not going to be a bull market but then i did i did want to predict that basically jupiter going into aries would bring things up a bit but it didn't and why didn't it because right right after that there was an eclipse basically and that eclipse was very bad for cryptocurrency in the markets and so rahu and k2 showed their face got in there showed their ugly heads and then messed everything up okay <clears throat> So overall, I will say that I was wrong, you know, because I didn't predict things completely right. But I also, like I hold, I hold kind of high standards to myself because really in a lot of ways it, it was right. The times I predicted the markets to go up, it didn't go up. But the times I predicted it would go down, it did go down. And I myself took my own advice and sold right before it was going down around the last moments of the period of good times. I didn't see the, the upward movement that I expected, but I went ahead and sold anyway because I knew that then we were going into downward times. And in fact, I sold hours before it dropped from like what? It dropped from like 30,000 to 20,000. And so I minimized a lot of risk, saved myself a lot of loss uh, by following my own advice. And so if you did take that course and you were to have followed my advice to the T, you wouldn't have made any, but you wouldn't have lost any either, which is really good for investing because you can't win every time. And in 2021, I was making, I was helping people double their money, triple their money, like so easily. You know what I mean? Like uh, I'm on record predicting the exact all time high of Bitcoin, you know, for 2021. And then even earlier that spring, if you watched my interview with Ernst Wilhelm, I pre the only dates I gave, the only two dates that I gave was the uh, the date that Ethereum broke an all-time high and the date that Bitcoin broke its first all-time high of that year. So, you know, that's undeniable, that's on record. But why was I wrong about 2022? Why was I wrong? Basically, yeah, I just didn't emphasize the lunar nodes enough. And these Rahu and Ketu are the lunar nodes, is what we're talking about, for those who don't know. These are like the, the ceiling 
you know of all of the things in astrology uh they're the highest thing that really they're just they're always going to show up and i i feel bad for not for not uh doing well with that um but you know every year can't be a winning year when it comes to investing you look at things in multi-year levels you know investing is not something that like I, t like I teach in the class, you know, there's a reason why the sign of the market's Libra, why Saturn is exalted there, no other planet. Saturn is the strongest. Saturn is the planet of long-term movement. He takes 30 years to go through the zodiac, which the moon does in a month. So, you know, like I talked about in that class, there's a reason why Saturn is exalted Libra um, and why, like they say, dead people make the best investors. This is a famous saying in the markets because there's a story about this where basically a famous investing firm went through all its most successful trading accounts and they found their best accounts were the accounts of people who were dead or were fired or inactive. So basically, sitting, buying right and sitting tight is the way to do it, you know? Um, and that's why Saturn, the planet, has literally rules dead things. Lazy, slowness, sluggishness is exalted in Libra, the sign of the market. But, you know, a lot more little little nuggets of astro wisdom you'll find in this course but that's just a little example so i did not emphasize what i myself had been teaching in previously like six months before in my rahu and k2 class on the lunar nodes in 2021 um the eclipse is moving into taurus and scorpio it's so funny i don't I'm, i was eclipsed myself i must have been fated to be this way or something because i had previously touched on like tweeted about it written about how yeah the markets are in the economy is going to be in trouble when rahu goes into taurus because taurus is the sign of wealth and money and currency and liquidity and value in general but you know uh yeah so basically like taurus is the sign of uh, value and uh how we get our needs met and it, that's why its lord is venus venus is the planet that assesses the value of any need you know and um, anyways, we go into that in the Venus class, but <clears throat> Rahu entering the sign of Taurus meant that there are major issues and problems coming up with the economy and with how all of us are going to get our needs met. And that's exactly what happened when we had those eclipses last spring. The economy tanks and the economy just started screwing up. And so I was wrong because I did predict at least certain upward movements and windows in that time. But again, like I said, uh, I myself took my own advice and sold at the right times and that protected my assets and minimized my loss. You know what I mean? And so if you had been like that, you would have also minimized your losses. So it was still a helpful class, in my opinion, or helpful predictions. But why, yeah, but I didn't emphasize the lunar nodes transiting. Jupiter was pointing the markets up, but the lunar nodes were pointing it down and they were more important because the eclipses are the most important thing. It's like if the sun cannot avoid being eclipsed, you and I are not gonna be able to avoid that blackout moment either. And in general, Rahu and Ketu represent the most faded aspects of our life. Um, so yeah, problems were scheduled to arise with all the markets and currencies in 2022. And crypto was not exempt from this because crypto is actually a Scorpio asset and Scorpio was also being eclipsed. It had Ketu there showing we needed to let go of that. And so yeah, I just, I blew it there. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, I give myself a very hard time whenever I'm wrong on any predictions. And this is also why I've just not really felt like doing any more, as much stuff on financial astrology. It's not really what I, I'm more into the psycho-spiritual healing our wounds aspect of astrology, but I know that this does really help people a lot to help them make money. So why does Scorpio rule over crypto? Well, Scorpio in astrology literally rules everything hidden. So like in terms of the body, you know, Gemini rules the arms, Cancer rules the breasts, Leo is the core, you know, Virgo is the hips, Libra is the pelvic triangle, Scorpio rules the genitals, the part of our body that's covered, you know, like um, it's the covered part, the hidden part. So everything hidden is Scorpio and crypto literally just means hidden. So cryptography, you know, like cryptography is the art of writing and reading things that are hidden and meant only for the private few. Um, you know, or like, uh, so in the same way, Scorpio rules are private parts, you know, um, it's the only thing we hide from the world. So Scorpio and Scorpio also rules crypts, like where the word crypt, you know, crypto crypt, like a tomb, you know, a place where the dead are hidden or stored privately and protected. So 
The course goes into this more in detail why Scorpio is a major sign for cryptocurrency. Um, and it also is even more important because of the Bitcoin natal chart. Uh, Scorpio represents, uh, it's just a big part of it, I don't want to go into that, but when you, we correctly rectified the Bitcoin natal chart in that course, it's one of the most important things, is because most people don't know, no one can cast a chart for Bitcoin because no one knows where the guy Satoshi launched it from or whatever. But we've rectified it and it works unbelievably well with the Lagna and everything that I use in that course. And in that course, Scorpio, we find that Scorpio has the most Ashtika Varga points for any sign in the Bitcoin chart. And it's also um, in a house that relates to money and just various other things. Um, and then you use past years, past uh, years of market research, and you'll find that Scorpio ingresses or movements, tra big transits through Scorpio are what make, the mark, make Bitcoin go way up. Like, I think it was 2018 when Jupiter went through Scorpio that we had this huge bull run, you know? Um, so we have already established in my course that Scorpio is a real, like, make it or break it type of Rashi for the Bitcoin chart. So then once the eclipses came in, it broke it instead of making it. You see what I'm saying? It eclipsed it. And that's why there was a market crash in 2022. And uh, it's funny because like the moon is debilitated in Scorpio and the moon represents like liquidity in the markets like I taught in the moon class. And that eclipse in Scorpio was when there was that coin uh, Terra Luna or whatever that crashed and went down to zero and then that made a big scare and there created a lot more fear. Fear and greed kind of move the markets and Scorpio is fear and Taurus is greed. You could also think of Libra a little bit as fear as well. But anyways, that's, that's another neither here nor there. So I knew ever since that first eclipse in Scorpio in late 2021 that the bull market was about to end because K2 had just moved into Scorpio, kind of like limiting it and completing that karma for that time. And that's why, yeah, like I did correctly predict the all time high and I correctly predicted that after that in January of 2022, everything's going to go back down. It's not going to go back up. And a lot of a lot of these big YouTubers and people are saying, oh, January 2022 is going to be a huge bull run. It's, the bull market's going to continue in 2022. They were all wrong. You won't find me saying that anywhere on the internet or anywhere publicly because I didn't say that. So, yeah. Um, but where did I go wrong again? You know, it's just that I, I overly emphasized that upward movement of Jupiter going into Aries, um, which is a very bullish thing overall because... Pisces is a really bad sign for Bitcoin and for cryptocurrency. We've already covered this in my class in the 20 hours. Pisces has the lowest Ashtika Varga of all the signs. It was only like 19 points in the Bitcoin natal chart. Those of you who know your Ashtika Varga, you know just like that's not a reliable sign. And every time there's big transits into Pisces, Bitcoin goes down. Like we just had happen as well. Um, March of, or February to March of 2023, there were, there was another kind of like drop down point that you notice happening and everyone was worried but again it was just this transit it was scheduled so i incorrectly emphasized this jupiter transit more than the lunar nodes and you know and i paid the price you know uh and i didn't emphasize enough how much the lunar nodes were going to harm the world economy um because they were kind of saying the opposite of what jupiter was saying Taurus is really that sign of value, but Libra is the sign of the price or the cost, as I explained in this Venus class. So Libra is how much you're paying for anything. Taurus is that thing you need to begin with, the value of the thing. Um, these are very crucial to understanding and practicing good financial astrology. And Taurus being eclipsed indicated that the value of currencies in general was going to go down. And we saw this with the insane amount of inflation. Too much inflation meant the dollar was less and less valuable every day as 2022 went on because they just kept printing more dollars. And as you know, like just whatever, we don't need to go into the worldly, to the news stories and all that, but I'm sure you guys saw it in life and in inflation, things going up in price, taking more dollars to get the same thing. So that's why I was wrong. Um, and yeah, it's like, uh, Taurus is really value, Venus, as the Lord of it, assesses the value of anything. Taurus is your needs. 
moon is a other the other planet of the needs the moment-to-moment -moment needs and that's why it's exalted in Taurus because it needs to be anchored in a more stable way and the moon is the thing that determines what you need so, uh, Libra is the sign of the price the cost you're willing to pay for something and that's why Saturn also why Saturn is exalted in Libra because Saturn is what you're gonna let go of what you're gonna part with and never get back and understanding this is the key to understanding markets so when things go down the price of something has gone down the changeable Libra wind sign quality of it it has gone up it has gone down that's changing Chara Rashi that's Libra's nature the value of a thing is fixed it's Taurus you know it's a fixed sign it just stays that way and so by knowing this you can you already know a big lesson on financial astrology like I own a property when the property housing market goes down I don't freak out and sell a chunk of my house you know I don't sell a chunk of my property no that would be ridiculous that's because the value is the same thing it's just the price that has momentarily shifted so to be a good investor you have to focus on value first and price secondarily does that make sense because the price will always fluctuate so anyways um, we're about to enter into another eclipse season the last set of eclipses with Rahu in Taurus and K2 in Scorpio so this is gonna be a really interesting time for finances and for the markets very very interesting time coming up in fact certain transits are gonna be coming up again that actually were happening in the USA Lunar New Year chart during like Black Tuesday when we had this famous market crash. Jupiter's going to go into Taurus with Rahu. Jupiter and Taurus, Jupiter was in Taurus with Rahu in the 12th house of the Lunar New Year USA mundane chart, the year of the market crash, like 1929 or something. Um, that's a little concerning, isn't it? But yeah, so what will that mean? Well. Let's see. Let's. Uh, I'm not going to give you guys everything because it is, it is my job to get paid to do this. So I'm not going to give you guys a bunch of freebies on YouTube. I'm sorry. You can take the courses or you can hire me to do astrology. Um, and that's the thing. If you're really wondering like what all what all is coming up, well, you know, I think a lot of you guys probably are. But yeah, what is the future of the crypto markets in general? If you really need to know that and you have a lot of assets on the table, you need to get a financial reading from me or another qualified astrologer who study this a lot and put a lot of time into this. Um, or you need to, or you need, if you have the time to study it yourself, you need to do that too. So you have two options, you know? Um, I'm available for readings and I also, will work really hard based on a percentage if you're willing to give me a percentage of what you make. I'm even open to deals where I don't gain anything unless I win and then I get a certain percentage. I'm open to this as well, but we would have to talk one-on-one -on -one with this and develop some sort of trust and rapport, which unfortunately is not very easy to find when it comes to people who are into cryptocurrency and markets. It's very much fair weather friends, you know? During the bull markets, everybody's my friend, everybody wants to know. And then when it's bear market, nobody wants to talk about this or deal with any of this, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, people just get really emotional with their money. And you can kind of see that again because the moon, the planet of emotions is exalted in Taurus and debilitated in Scorpio. And uh, the markets move based on the mood and the emotion, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so what I would suggest is uh, essentially two courses of action. Um, hiring me, or hiring another skilled financial astrologer like me just to tell you if you don't have the time and you do have the assets or take the time to study this yourself most of you guys watching this are studies students of astrology so you can always just take my financial master course you know my Udaya Jyotisha course and learn from me how I predicted the all-time highs of Bitcoin and Ethereum and you can just do that as long as you're willing to put the time in it's not easy it does take time to be good at anything it takes time especially a science so difficult and hard to do that most people still don't even believe it's possible to do like you know what I mean predicting the markets with astrology a lot of people don't even believe that's possible um, so yeah it's gonna take you time months not just days but months at least um, the, the master course is 20 plus hours long so there's a lot of material in it we focus on like certain planets certain techniques we go over so many things um, 
and you do need to know at least some fundamentals of astrology to get the most out of that course. So if you don't really feel like you know your fundamentals, then take my Jyotish and Yogic Philosophy course, which is just a course from the ground up, like everything you need to know about Vedic astrology as well as Yogic Philosophy and even meditation and things like that and some Sanskrit and just to get a well-rounded understanding of Vedic astrology, take that course. And that will give you everything you need to start going into the deeper waters of financial astrology. And I hope that many of you join me in this because the waters are deep, like as deep as that gets, you know? In general, astrology and Jyotish is extremely deep. It's a vast ocean. I'm just like a sailor on this one boat who has touched a few shores, but has definitely not reached the far shore or the end of it all, you know? Um, and I encourage you all to study with me. But that's basically it. Some of, the, some of the only real criticism that I've gotten from that course is that it's just too in-depth for someone to just start off with, um, some, or someone who's just a market trader and doesn't really know astrology. But if you are just a trader, just hire me for a reading and then that would solve the problem be much, much faster. Um, but you'll, and you'll save yourself months of time and study. But if you're someone that does study astrology already, then you should do your due diligence and study that course and others as well, and be willing to put the time in before you, and you know before you make a lot of big calls, you know, um, or you can get burned pretty badly. But if you put the time in, before you know it, you will be predicting market movements just as accurately as me. So I hope that that helps you guys kind of understand where things are going right now. Um, like I was saying, Bitcoin and crypto was scheduled to be low during uh, the time the sun moved through Pisces from February 22nd to March 20th, 20th or whatever. And then the sun is now exalted. It's a very important planet for Bitcoin. So now Bitcoin's starting to go up just as scheduled, just as I was predicting to people who did get readings from me privately. I mean, they can maybe they'll see your comment or they can vouch for it. But this is like a thing we've done and predicted repeatedly. So Bitcoin is scheduled to go up even more in the next coming days in late March and into April. But then there's an eclipse and then there's going to be the sun's going to move into Taurus and then things are going to get more interesting. And it's yeah, I don't want to say too much about it. You know, um, it might be good. It might be bad. It's there's a, there's a lot of factors going on and I don't want to give it away, but it it's definitely safer right now if you wanted to buy in at this time definitely looking safer to go up it gets more tricky and complicated there and then later on this year gets really interesting because then the lunar nodes are gonna switch signs and then so we have some times coming up this summer and autumn and all that are just interesting so we'll leave it at that all right so thanks you guys and uh, yeah be sure to check out those courses if you're into financial astrology um, and study this stuff for yourself uh,